they are literally at the top controlling all the different religions of the world just to divide everyone. And remember, this is to create the biggest mind control show in human history. They have no, they're, they're in it for, for the end. I mean, they will do the most horrific things to control everybody's minds because they're already going to hell. There, there's no way out for them. They're, it's their bloodline. The only way they can stop it is stop the judgment. And the judgment comes from the sons of God. So of course they're gonna do everything possible to stop that. And unfortunately there's a lot of, and I'll call them sons of God. There's a lot of sons of God who don't know who Jesus is or think that they're part of the satanic bloodline because they are so deceived, but they truly have a book in heaven. They have an opportunity to become a manifested son of God. In fact, if they are in the occult, they typically have very good, strong gifts and abilities and talents that if they were working for the real living God, they would be a force to be reckoned with. But unfortunately, they're being used by the kingdom of the darkness. And this is like, we're in a time right now that the Lord is really working and pressing into these individuals because he's like, hey, you're my son, you're my daughter, I want you. Strength to know and believe, and maybe there's some fear of like, well, what if I walk in there and I start declaring, decreeing all the witchcraft to be bound? And in fact, that they, you know, Exodus 22, 18 on them. What if I do that and they hit me back, right? Because that's usually, we've already been programmed and I, please forgive me, please forgive me because we did this early on in our ministry too. Well, if you don't do this, this and that, then you're going to get backlash. No, if you walk in your authority and you know who you are as a son of God, there will be no backlash because you've got an illegal, although see, they're trying to make it in America. Well, no, still in Europe too, right? You've got an illegal and then you've got a legal one. Someone who actually has a real gavel, not a witchcraft gavel, not a counterfeit gavel, but someone that has a gavel that God, the living God gave them. They get a hit upside by my gavel. They're going to take my weapon away and hit me with my weapon because we've been programmed to believe that, right? We've been programmed to believe that they can hit us with scripture and curses. No, it's illegal. It is straight up illegal and we must walk in that. So how do you walk in that? You rescue, you do soul deliverance on the soul fragments that don't believe it. So you could ask yourself, who in me doesn't believe that I have authority over the witchcraft operating in my church? Who in me that doesn't believe I have authority over the witchcraft that is operating in my workplace? Who in me doesn't believe that I have authority over the witchcraft that is operating in my neighborhood? and do those deliverances. Ask yourself those questions, get to the root of that. You can even use, if, if you don't have access to the deliverance of the soul course, even that rejection and betrayal course, it's not gonna teach you about the aspects of the soul. It's not gonna give you any of that, but it will just give you the straight deliverance, kind of like what we do here. You get as much time as you want. There's a ton of questions. I don't know how many, but there's a lot of questions. You can take certain questions or ask yourself the, those specific questions. That's a powerful deliverance because uh, really our, our fragmentation is rooted in some sort of betrayal and rejection. If we need to start standing up and speaking up for righteousness and justice in many matters, how do we do that without trying to be that of a superhero? Well, you have to be connected to the heart of the Father. So you have to know what righteousness is versus in righteousness and unrighteousness. You have to know the difference between um, witchcraft, rebellion, and what the Father's heart says over a situation. So that's where we have to be directly connected to the Father and walking with King Jesus, that there will be a conviction of Holy Spirit, there'll be a conviction in our heart that says there's unrighteousness going on here. And then that's where I say, let you pray about that. Ask the Lord to search your heart, do soul deliverance over that certain situation. And then you know that you can walk into that situation without backlash. God is still, he's still gonna answer the prayer. He's still gonna answer the declaration. You, but if you don't, if you don't search your heart first, you might get hit with some of the the debris, <laughs> the flying debris of the destruction that he just released over the kingdom of darkness. It might burn you a bit if you don't deal with your heart first. But yeah, the father who loves everything and hates unrighteousness, he will show you. It was how do believers stand under this who have been programmed, I think. Um, again, it's soul deliverance, right? So if you've been programmed and if you've been under the Freemason system, it's soul deliverance because the soul deliverance removes the soul fragment and the lies and the programming and the triggers, the coping mechanisms, removes it from realms. It just completely, and, and of course it destroys the kingdom of darkness. Um, and then the more soul deliverance that you do, the more you will know and walk in that the authority that you have. That Five senses, taste, touch, sight, sound, smells. These are all triggers that activate the physical and spiritual emotions, right? <clears throat> So they can be triggers in a negative way and they can be triggers in a good way when we're connected to Holy Spirit. So I'm just gonna go through a few things. Um, actually, before we start this, everybody just take a moment right now, place your hand upon your chest and just say, I forgive myself. I forgive myself for any fear, for any triggers, for any accusations, I forgive others that have triggered me. I forgive Anne if she triggered me. And I receive your forgiveness, King Jesus. 
There is nothing to be afraid of. I thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross so that we can walk with you, so you can take up a residency in our temple. Son of God is, is Elohim. So Adam was the first son of God. Adam was designed, the first man was designed in the image of God, Elohim, both male and female. Let me see if I can share um, an image. Ema was created. So Genesis 127, but it also talks about it in Genesis 5, 2, Genesis 127. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he, him, male and female. So uh, there was the female, which was Eve, but her name was actually just woman at the time. And then we've got Adam. Um, so that was the first son of God. He was created in his image. And then Jesus came so that there can be many. And it, um, I don't know the scripture off the top of my head, their address, but he says, Jesus is the firstborn of many sons of God. So there was Jesus and now after Jesus, there can be many. Now the manifestation of it would be those two together, the male and the female from before the foundations of the world. I just really quickly, I was putting the chat, but yeah, looking at Hebrew is so good. I mean, it's challenging, but yeah, I mean, there are different definitions, even like our English words, sometimes we'll have two meanings. Looking at Hebrew is really good. So just confirming that. Right, that Anne has actually shared with us previously. The blue letter Bible is a good start. So you don't necessarily have to be a scholar, right? But starting with the blue letter Bible and then just doing a word search and it'll take you through, right? The lowercase suns and one of the definitions, right? Is angels and then also stars, which is really interesting. And then it'll, in that same Hebrew verse, when you look at the strong concordance, is that same Hebrew, that 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 um, uh, word is the same that was used with the sons of God that approached right in heaven and Job, and so it's the very same. And we know specifically we're talking that 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 context is about fallen angels. So yes, it's angels, but in that specific context, it's fallen angels. Just want to add that. Wow! Thank you. That is so powerful. There you go. You just wrapped it up right there. Thank you. Yeah. Freemasonry, all forms of the occult and Satanism, all of that, it's illegal. It's just straight up illegal. This earth is owned by the one and only living God and his elect, which are seen as right. Those of his elect that are seen as righteous in his eyes, they are also the co-owners and the rulers over this earth with him and through him. The righteous ones have a duty to subdue the evil and have dominion over this earth. So of course, they first must know that they have the power as a righteous son of God, right? And secondly, they must not be afraid or timid to enforce true justice. God hates unrighteousness. He hates it. Most importantly, it's, it's important for us to understand, and I don't mean this in a way to accuse the church, church that we know it today, the four walls of the church, they've failed us. They are not the church. They have stolen the identity of the ecclesia and called themselves the church, but really they're at the top of the pyramid. And if you haven't, so if you haven't repented, or if you have repented of your past and you're walking with King Jesus, nothing can touch you. You have to understand that. Jesus paid the price, past, present, and future. That means sickness, that means death, definitely Freemasonry curses. They cannot touch us, but we have to know this. And I mean, like we have to know it deep down in our bones, deep down in our atomic structure, the atoms, what holds our body together. We have to know this. Our, our blood has to be raging knowing this. So that when we do see injustice, when we see witchcraft happening, when we see curses trying to be released, that you just stop it right there. You stop it just by your thoughts, you stop it right there. God hates unrighteousness, period. He loves justice. And he, you know what, you wanna make God, you wanna make the one and only living God, King Jesus happy? Walk in righteousness and justice first in your life. And then most importantly, in those that you have an impact around you. <clears throat> but you have to do it with the heart of the Father. You can't be like, ah, you're doing this, you're doing that. To develop a relationship with Jesus, with King Jesus, you literally start to have his heart. When you start to realize the torment that he went through, for us to be playing games, was, as an example, chase the flash, the, the light, that the flashlight is thrown all over the floor, rather than going after the person holding the flashlight, tooling with us, we will never be a manifested son of God. The rituals, the curses, 